All right, so we got the Lost Promix explained by a Australian. So you got the videos, good man. G'day, guys and gal. Games Workshop are very deliberate with what they flesh out and what they leave ambiguous. Some might say True. this is so the consumer can insert their own lore into the gaps, but I reckon it's because they don't want to embarrass themselves with shite storytelling for key plot points. Nothing has been left more mysterious than the identity and fate of the 2nd and 11th Legion in their primer. Okay, true what he just said. Like, th that is very mysterious. Like, you know, that, that, um, that I think Legion 2 and Legion 11 their primarchs are just disappeared, gone, like, you know, disappeared like magic. Now, I didn't even, I didn't even, like, understand that point of view until Major Care literally just said it, like, 20 seconds ago. So, basically, do, do game works, do they, like, do they legit just on purpose just leave a bunch of things open so people can, like, come up, like, with their own theories and, like, stuff like that? I did not even think, of that, uh, uh, think about that. I mean, if that's the case, that's, like, a good way to, like, you know make people like form theories and you know form like predictions and, and stuff like that um but at the same time though i don't know like i do find it kind of cool like like these open mysteries and stuff like that i do find it kind of cool uh at the end of the day game works they do like control everything you know because it is their franchise but um like the whole legion 2 and legion 11 thing bro as, as a warhammer new booty i'm gonna be honest with you that's pretty mysterious. And the fact that nobody else want to say something like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, you, of course, bro. Actually, as a matter of fact, I just seen, uh, you know, the, I just seen Legion 2's Primark the other day at the grocery store. Like, the fact that nobody wanted to say anything is absolutely crazy. And, and the fact that, like, it's just, they're just gone out of nowhere, bro. Something got to give. I'm going to be honest with you. Nice. As GW slowly begin to peel back the layers of the less known lore, like how they have gone in depth with the Emperor's unification wars and his tragic Thunder Boys, I'm honestly expecting some concrete stuff from the Lost Legion soon. They have already dropped us plenty of hints, enough hints to make this video, so I would say it's only a matter of time. Before we get started, I have a treat for you. When Cyberpunk 2077 was announced, I was still a virgin who had only just started high school, so it's pretty awesome to see it's finally coming out in only a couple of days. Hence, I've teamed up with Instant Gaming to host a giveaway for you guys, oh, it's an ad. where Instant Gaming will be giving away 10 copies of Cyberpunk, as well as a 380 graphics card. It's Ooh. free to enter. Well, I need that graphics, I'm gonna be honest with you. While you're there, why not check out the rest of the site and pick I up some need that graphics card. Cannot games, lie to you. such as the Total War, Warhammer, or Dawn of War games. Obviously, I'm referring to Dawn of War 1 and 2 here, not 3. Honestly, with how much money you can save through buying off instant gaming, oh, there's no reason yo, not so to like make this your new store like for you game guys, keys. Like, Thank you, Instant Gaming, for sponsoring like, this like, video. Like Today, we'll go over like who the Lost Primarchs could really have been and how so they like, may dang, have met okay. their unfortunate ends. We'll then go over some of the cooler fan made Lost Primarchs. As a disclaimer, I'm using obscure references and canon mentions of the Lost Legions in order to make my own conclusions and try paint a picture okay. for you. What By the way, this is his own conclusion. This isn't facts, okay? Because at the end of the day, there's no official answer. Those two are wiped from the map completely. There's no official, like, whatever. So if you try to find it, I mean, you could, you, you're, you're running into a bunch of, like, you know, uh, hypotheses and uh, opinions and stuff like that. You won't really run into, like, you know, like the like the stone core like facts until like GameWorks has something about it. Oh, this picture should be pretty accurate due to me combing through the lore for all the times the Lost Legions are mentioned. I could also be very wrong about the final result. However, I'm also generally pretty wrong about clearly written lore, so this is just another standard major kill video. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's get into it. A lot of people it. believe that GW will never reveal the Lost Primarchs, as we're having a blank spot for detailed lore. It allows people to create their own homebrew Primarchs. Well, those people, including anyone from GW who has confirmed that, are supremely retarded and should jump off a bridge. Yes, GW has allowed and encouraged the use of homebrew Space Marine chapters, but that is all because all it takes to create a homebrew chapter is to color an Imperial Fist left pinky pink and then call them the Minge Destroyers. Voila, new chapter. At most, you could then go on to kit bash a dildo on their head or print off a unique shoulder pad for them if you're really crazy about it. For a homebrew Primark, you would need to pay hundreds of dollars if not more to get a 3D modeler to create your Primark from scratch and then get it printed. You would then have to spend hours creating a really cool backstory for them so that if anyone ever saw your Primark, their first reaction wouldn't be, wow, what a piece of shit. The point I'm trying to make is that GW has no real economic incentive to keep the lost Primarchs mysterious for the sake of the incredibly tiny Primark homebrew community. 
Now that's out of the way, let's start with the cold hard facts about the Lost Legions and their Primarchs. Okay. We know for certain that the Lost Primarchs are dead, and that their deaths were pretty unpleasant. Their memory was struck from existence, and anyone who dares speak of them would be put to death. Oh. Wait, so is that why? Is that why, like, nobody, like, says nothing about them? Because, like, if they even mention them, it's over? Like, it's up? Wow. So, obviously, they didn't go down screaming, For the Emperor! It would be easy to say that Chaos got to them early, but that just wasn't the case. The majority of Primarchs were completely oblivious to Chaos, but knew a fair amount about their brother's downfall. We also know that by the time the Emperor found Corvus, the lost Primarchs were already dead. Hence, it's also a fact that their demise occurred reasonably early within the Great Crusade. Another fact we know is that the Lost Legions fought in the Rangdang Xenocide, which was humanity's greatest challenge prior to the Horus Heresy, and I even made a video on it the other day. When they fought here, they were not yet disgraced and disbanded, and the death of one of the Lost Primarchs is heavily believed to be because of the Rangdang Xenocide. More on that in a moment. We also know that when the Lost Legions got deleted, not all of them were purged and a large number of them were absorbed by other legions, mostly by the Ultramarines who experienced a large influx of numer- Okay, I did hear about that. I did hear that whenever um, whenever the two Primarchs, like whenever they got wiped or whenever they, they you know, they, they got stumped out or whatever, a lot of their Marines or whatever joined other like legions and like other like packs and stuff like that and yeah the, he is right the ultramarines did get like a lot of like free agents and stuff like that um you know like it's the nba okay so that that, that does make sense at the same time as the disbanding of the second and 11th coincidence i think not yeah yeah i mean that makes some sense. word bearers even discuss the exact thing happening in canon so i'm pretty confident this is the case after all even with chaos corruption and careful planning by their Primarch, one third of each traitor legion was still loyalist, so it's not hard to assume the same would come of the lost legions. So here is the big theory about the death of one of the lost Primarchs. I can't say which one, because GW hasn't made any fucking distinctions between the two of them, <laughs> but that's unimportant. I mentioned this in my Rangdung Xenocide video, but basically the Rangdun, or maybe their sloth overlords, were known for their incredible mind control powers. I reckon that the Rangdun were able to corrupt one of the lost Primarchs and a lot of his legion over to their core. I did hear that. I, here's the thing, and again, this, none of this is confirmed. But I did hear that one of the Primarchs was actually, like, corrupted or something like that. And that's why the Emperor had to, like, hurry up and, like, stomp him out or whatever. Um, I did hear that one of them was corrupt. I don't know if that's true or not. But in a lot of these uh, videos where I tried to cover, like, you know, um, like, what happened to, like, the Lost Primarchs or whatever. Because I thought there was actually, like, an answer. Turns out there's not an answer. There's not even, like, GW didn't say nothing about why these two are gone. Um, I did come to find out that one of the Primarchs, I forget whether it was 2 or 11, I think they, like, they got corrupted or something like that, and that's why, like, they're not there. Um, I don't know about the other one, but at the end of the day, bro, like, it, listen, and, and I'm gonna say, say this one last time, if you have two Primarchs or whatever, that's just completely gone, there was supposed to be 20 of you guys, now there's 18, nobody wants to mention, nobody, like, bro, nobody, like, if you mention these two Primarchs, it's over for you, it's up, what do they have to do? What what did these two Primarchs have to do to the point to where if you mention, like, like if you even mention their existence, it's over for you? What did they have to do? Because if you're thinking about it, like, there's, like, they have to do something worse than what Horus did. And Horus, I mean, bro, he went toe to, I mean, why does, I won't say toe to toe, but bro, he fought the Emperor. And the Emperor had to kill Horus. So what did, like, and like people, I think people like, like some of like the Primarchs, they still mention Horus. What did these two have to do for you to, like, if you mention their name, it's up, it's over for you, like you're dead. Like, what did they have to do? That's my question. Because there's like, and, and the fact, here's the thing, here's my hypothesis, right? I think they're dead. And I think that they tried to do something really like, you know, crazy, whatever. And I think the Emperor like stumped them out. The fact that, if any of the other Primarchs mention these, um, like, you know, Primarchs or whatever, and, like, you're threatened with death if you mention them, I think that they did something crazy. It had to be, like, above and beyond, like, bro, Buzz Lightyear level. It is crazy. So, um, I mean, we'll, I guess we'll find out someday. Or, bro, GW is like, bro, you, bro, y'all will never find out. 
explaining why the Rangdung Xenocides were so challenging for the Imperium, as well as why the Rangdung Xenocides have been mostly purged from Imperial records. There is absolutely no description or image of the Rangdung available, as I believe the Emperor didn't want it to be common knowledge that one of his sons had betrayed him. We could even go as far as to say that there was no Rangdung Xeno, and that the Rangdung was just a cover-up for a Legion-going traitor. This theory is backed up by the fact that Russ has hinted towards being the Emperor's executioner, and having experience when it comes to killing Primarchs. Obviously that experience doesn't count for much because he failed to kill Horus, Angron and Magnus despite being in a position where he could have killed all three of them. Horrible but, job. You know, she'll be right. Russ also states that Astartes vs Astartes combat prior to the Horus heresy had happened before. Now he could have been talking about the battle he had with that walking abortion advertisement Angron or he could have been talking about the Rangdung Xenocides, a war that he and his wolves took a large part in. From this, I can comfortably say that at least one of the lost Primarchs met their demise during the Rangdung Xenocides, mm. as they fought against the Emperor. The appropriate characters are in the right spot, i.e. Lehman was around and Corvus and his Raven Guard were not, the timeline is reasonable, and the mystery of the entire event all clearly points towards this. Mm. Now whilst there's a chance that the other lost Primarch died here as well, I really don't think they did. It was stated by Rogal that each lost Primarch experienced a different tragic demise. The clues for the fate of the remaining Lost Legion Primarch might lay with Sanguinius. When Horus caught Sanguinius culling one of his sons who had fallen to the Red Thirst, Sanguinius begged Horus not to tell the Emperor, as he believed that if Father found out about the Blood Angel's gene flaw, they would suffer the same fate as the Lost Legions. The death of the missing Primarchs were tragedies. Their deaths weren't glorious, yet the Lot Legions weren't despised. So they was planning something crazy. And bro, bro, that's legit like, <laughs> but that's like you doing some type of like science experiment in your room and like your older brother comes in and he sees you just messed up the walls and everything and your brother's begging you not to tell your mom because bro, as soon as you tell your mom, it's over for you. Or as soon as you tell your dad, it's over for you. That's legit. That's <laughs> bro, that is like the most big brother, like, like brotherly type of thing that I've ever seen in this game. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, oh, don't tell dad, please. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> people just kind of felt sad about what had happened to them. Hence, the other lost Primarchs succumbing to a serious gene flaw and then being put out of their misery could have been what happened. This theory can be rebuked by saying, if one of the Lost Legion's gene flow was so bad that their Primarch had to be deleted, then how come a large part of the Legion was able to join up with the other Legions such as the Ultramarines? Well, to this, you could say that only a certain percentage of the Legion, including the Primarch, experienced the gene flaw. Or you could say that when the Emperor ordered said percentage of the Legion to be culled, the Primarch refused to do so and rebelled. Lorga also mentioned that he feared the Emperor would do the same to him and his Legion after the Emperor mind raped him for being too religious. But while Sanguinis was certain that fate awaited his Legion, Lorga just kind of said it as a, Daddy is mad at me. Please, Daddy, not the belt. There doesn't seem to be a huge consensus from the different writers about what happened to the Lost Legion. Real quick. Or, you know what? I think that, because obviously, like Major Kill said, I don't know if this is true or not, but basically he just said that both Primarchs, their deaths, whatever, were like two different. There were two different deaths or whatever. So like, I mean, here's the thing, right? And I do think that one of the Primarchs was tampering. I thought, bro, I, 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 I listen, I 100% bro, I can almost bet on that. That one of the Primarchs were like 1,000% tampering with the gene flow and stuff like that. Yeah, they, yeah, that's what I think. Like 1,000%. That's how they got wiped out. So yeah. Most paint the purge Primarchs as tragic accidents, while others heavily imply that they needed to be culled. It's also hard to determine if the lost Primarchs crimes were so great that they had to be purged from existence, or if the Emperor just wanted to maintain the propaganda that his Space Marines and Primarchs were unbeatable and infallible. Now I did say that people who wanted the missing Primarchs to stay ambiguous so they could have their own homebrew Primarchs were retards, and I stand by that. However, a couple homebrew Primarchs have been made anyway, so I'll pick out a couple of my favourite. First off, we have Ikarion the Stormborn of the Second Legion, the Lightning Bearers. Off the bat, the Primarchs were missing a Japanese-inspired Primarch. It was like GW said, we got a Mongolian, you know, what else is there? And forgot that if Warhammer had been allowed to take off in Asian countries, they would be worth a bazillion dollars, and that nobody in Mongolia can afford motorbikes. Ikarion is the Primarch equivalent of a noble <laughs> samurai who wielded incredible elemental powers based around, you guessed it, 
lightning. <laughs> now, from the fan law made about Yo, him, his crazy. demise and fall doesn't seem to be connected to the Rung Dung Xeno sides. I would say that his son's tendency to electrocute shit, as well as being a bunch of sushi-eating pussies who didn't want to genocide in the Emperor's name anymore, led to them getting excommunicated. There is an amazing artwork here that details the end of Icarion and his sons. It depicts Russ and Icarion having a final no, this conversation is this is nice. this before is Russ kills Icarion in a duel. The conversation basically goes Russ being like, I don't want to have to kill you, but you turning your back on us has left me no choice. And then Akarion is like, so got to do that. Oh no, that's crazy. Yo, 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 major kill, that's crazy. Yo, major kill. Yo, 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 major kill. I'm gonna be honest with you, yo. That's crazy. I, yo, you know what, bro? I'm gonna have to pull you to the side and talk to you. That's crazy. Then Russ is like, that's crazy. Eat death, you fucking weeb. Yeah, that, that, that's more or less how it goes. The unique style, design, and abilities of Akarion are impressive and would easily allow him to stand out as a fan favorite from the rest of his brothers. You know, if you didn't get killed, then deleted. There's actually a lot of cool artwork for this guy and his legion. So if someone wants to flesh out their lore a bunch or send me a link to a lore page about them that I was unable to find myself, then I might end up making a video on him. My choice for the 11th Primark <laughs> is a bit harder because Akarion just kind of shits on everyone else's homebrew Primarchs, but I'll have to go with Raktra Akaro, Primark of the Ursan Berserkers. Because, you know, he kind of looks like the guy that would get mind controlled by the Rangdung. The issue True, with he does. He does, is that he's he does look like a crash out. I'm gonna be honest with you. He, he looks like a straight crash out. Creator decided to pile him into a fan made version of the 40k universe that has different fan made Primarchs for each Legion. Whilst this is cool, I guess, it means I can't use much of his lore to describe him here, as it would make absolutely no sense. This is why fan-made Primarchs is stupid. Basically, Raktra was a raging asshole that could match Angron with how much of a ruthless dick he was. At least Angron had an excuse via the nails in his brain. Raktra just kind of sucked as a person. However, he was a master hunter and an apex predator of his planet, growing up in a gang of a hostile world that had been ravaged by the Age of Strife. When the Emperor arrived, Raktra was excited to finally meet an individual more powerful than he, hence he agreed to serve the Emperor. Well, when he discovered that his role of a Primarch was to protect humanity, not teabag it, he got pretty upset. With how powerful and ruthless he was, as well as how cooked his brain seemed to be, he would be the perfect candidate for the Rangdung Xeno side's Primarch. Fan-made stuff is cool. Canon lore is cooler. Give me some canon missing Primarchs, or just make Icarion canon, and I'll be happy. And that does us for today, guys. The Lauren oh, story of what we know about. Shout out to Major Kill, man. I mean, listen, until GW, I think this video was like, what, like a year or two ago? Until GW said something about this, man, we will, we, we will officially, we will never um, officially know what happened to um, Primark 2 and 11. Um, and it, bro, it's so crazy because I was so excited to see what happened to him. I mean, not because, like, you know, I love death or something. Like, no, I'm not. Come on, bro. But, um,. You know, just hopping into like you know the the Primarch stuff like that. I'm like, yo, like what? Where's two and where's eleven? I remember the first time. Um, oh my God, what's vi what's video was it? They were actually it was this, uh, was a West Hammer or was a Major Kill? They were covering like uh, all the Primarchs and stuff like that. And I'm like, wait, did they skip two? I thought there was supposed to be twenty. Like what happened? Oh, I think it was Bricky. I think. Um, but I'm like, wait, wait, wasn't it supposed to be twenty? What happened to the other two? And I'm so like. And that right there, you know, that mystery created like a little excitement, whatever, because I'm like, yo, like, what happened to the other two? Maybe they're dead or something like that, whatever. Turns out, bro, we don't even know what happened. It, it, that, that's so crazy. I mean, and to be honest with you, Major Kill is probably right. Uh, what he said about at the beginning of the video, he was like, you know what? Maybe, you know, GW just leaves it out in the open just so people can come up with their own, like, you know, theories and hypotheses and stuff like that, which is always fun. You know, you always want that, um, especially like in a... In a uh, like in a, in a strong franchise like Warhammer or or just any other franchise in general. You know, you want to be like, oh, what happened to this character? And they, there's no official answer, so people will come up with their theories and stuff like that. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't know if Gian, it, it, I, bro, I almost said Giannis. I was about to say, bro, this not, we're not talking about basketball. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't even know if GW will most likely even tell us what happened, um, you know, to Primark 2 and 11. And to be honest with you, bro, I kind of don't think they should. I think that should be like its own mystery that should just go on for like for like time and time again. I mean, yeah, it would be cool for GW to just make something up and be like, oh, well, you know, um, they just got destroyed, whatever. He's corrupted. Da, 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 da. He tried to mix up the, the gene seed. Da, 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 da. He couldn't do that. The emperor came through, clapped both of them. I mean, GW can just do that right now, but 
I don't know. I think they should just leave it alone. Just leave it like an open mystery, or whatever. But comment down below, man. What do you guys think? What's your theories? What's your hypothesis? And stuff like that. Make sure you guys like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And I'm going to see you guys later for the next time I'm out. And peace out.